Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to my channel. And welcome to another video. I wanted to talk about an article that I just found on Bounding in the Comics. It's actually uh, a few days old, but uh, it, it, it's relevant to the things we've been talking about in, you know, in culture and certainly on my channel as well. So I wanted to discuss it a little bit. And it says, Kevin Feige invokes Stan Lee. Says Marvel movies created to push a worldview that is the right way to be, quote unquote. This really is, you know, I'm just chronicling what I call, as you see from the title of the video, the fall of Kevin Feige. Really is the fall of Kevin Feige. I, I've spoken so highly of him so many different times, and I'll always, I'll never just suddenly not like what he's done with the Marvel Cinematic Universe thus far. He's been a, a, an amazing pioneer of this new uh, franchise genre of storytelling, but I don't know what's happened. I, well, I, I suspect what's happened. It really does seem like there's just a new person all of a sudden rearing his head and just so willing to suddenly throw it all away just for the sake of, of moralizing and, and social preaching. It's really, uh, it's yeah, it's sad. It's mind boggling. I suspect, though, that he finally got to the point where you, you see this a lot with celebrities who, who are, you know, they, they do they do a work, they, they are acting, they're, they're musicians or whatever, and they, they become very popular. They do great work because they're, they're, they're keeping their work in a, in, a, in a space, in a confined space where it's just art, it's just entertainment, and they, they want to gain fans. They get to a point, though, where they reach a certain popularity level, certain level of fame, certain level of power, and they start to think that they're untouchable. And then they just start to say whatever they want to, and they start to really sacrifice... The storytelling and they start to to pull out the preaching we see this time and time and again and you might say well come on kevin feige i mean he's been you know <laughs> at a place where he's pretty much untouchable for a long time now yes but think about how long his planning goes back for the marvel cinematic universe you know and the whole thing from the beginning really was to get to this point now so i think we're just now reaching a point where he can start being creative and adding new directions into the next phase of planning, uh, you know, what's going to happen after Endgame and after the the real first book closes on the cinematic universe and, and all the characters that we've known and loved. I'm not too interested in what's going to take place next. I mean, they, they'd have to really, really retcon a lot of this crap they've been saying and, and really try to win me back if they wanted to do that. But uh, I don't I don't think that's going to be the case at all. So wanted to, to draw attention to some quotes, and this is a pretty good article. Actually, it's a really good article from Bounding Cool, Bounding Into Comics, sorry. I get Bleeding Fool and Bounding Into Comics mixed up sometimes, but Bounding Into Comics is a really great article. It makes a lot of great points and really combats a lot of the nonsense that Kevin Feige is saying here. But I just want to read this quote. So speaking with the Los Angeles Times, Feige invoked Stan Lee. We're just the stewards, the current stewards of these characters that he and his co-creators brought together. All right, absolutely, absolutely. That's not even a question. You're absolutely right. It's good of you to think about yourselves as the stewards of these characters. Pre-established, pre-created characters, not characters that you can remake or anything like that. That's good. You're the steward of these characters. And you're not just the steward of these characters, though. Well, we'll get into this in a second. You're not just the steward of characters created by people before you. You're the steward of characters who have been accepted and embraced by the public consciousness. That's, that's really a key difference here goes on to say, and all of them were created in that spirit of those soapboxes. Wrong. All right, he's talking about Stan Lee's soapboxes, these little uh, great articles, these editorials that, that Stan Lee would often have at the end of comics, where he would, yeah, he would get up on his soapbox, so to speak, and he would tell something, you know, give a little moralizing kind of uh, message, a little sermon or something like that. I don't know. I wouldn't even call them sermons, really. They were great. They were fine. There's nothing wrong with them. He was really drawing out um, messages and values and, and telling Telling the, uh, the readers, young readers, you know, about this stuff, you know, you think about this as in the civil rights era, you know, going, uh, from there forward that he's writing all of this. So, so great stuff, great stuff. But the characters didn't come from the soapboxes. The characters came first. Their stories rose organically. Stan Lee knows how to, to tell a story. I, I'll get to that in a second. And, you know, he, he has these values within him. So, of course, you know, the soapbox is something separate, but that doesn't mean there's no link at all between the characters and their stories and Stanley's values. But that means that that's a natural, organic link that's there. The stories don't exist and arise out of Stan's soapbox. And that's the real crucial misunderstanding that Kevin Feige, Brie Larson, every idiot SJW in entertainment seems to have right now. But then he goes on. He says he would add, that was very much Stan Lee's worldview, uh, was that that's what we want to represent in these movies. And he says, uh, because that is, how do I put this? I'm going to highlight it here. Because that is, how do I put this? 
It's the right way to be. It is the way the world should be. And one of the great things about movies is you get to showcase the world that you want to reflect and the way you want the world to be. And that's what he did with these characters. You could not be more wrong. How does Kevin Feige, the man who's who's shown such amazing depth of understanding about these characters and about storytelling, how does he suddenly just forget all of that and come up with just such wrong, ridiculous... I, 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 uh, that's not what making movies for. That's not what telling stories is for. If you are, are using your movies, using your stories in order to push the kind of world you want, that's not stories. That's propaganda. That's the definition of propaganda. This is... Stanley never, ever wrote propaganda. He, that was against his belief here as a storyteller. I'm not going to say he never, ever wrote propaganda. I don't know every little thing he ever wrote. But you know what I mean. In general, that's not what he was going for. And I want to draw your attention to... This is a... Uh, Dave T., my, my artist here, that my partner for Tales from the Stacks, which I'll get to in a minute and pimp there in a second, but a uh, great, great artist. And he responded to this Bounding Into Comics article with some, some cool things to say. But one of the things he posted was this little clip of Stan Lee here. And it was uh, from a video he's got actually on his channel. If you go to Geek Out Loud with a W is the out and the loud there, you'll find, uh, you can find his whole video to this. But he, but he had a great little clip here. And um, I'll, I'll play a couple pieces of it here. I felt we've got to be careful and we've got to make sure that we're not giving them the wrong messages. So I never, I don't like to preach. I hate people to preach to me and I don't like to preach to other people. But at the same time, I feel there are kind of universal truths that nobody could quibble with. Like to me, the most important mantra in the world is do unto others what you'd have them do unto you. I mean, I don't see how anybody could take issue with that, and I try to follow that, and I think if everybody followed it, this would be a, the world would be paradise if you'd never treat anybody the way you didn't want to be treated. So that, that's a... You see, you hear what he says there. Yes, you know, they're writing, they were writing directly to children back in the day. Of course, the audience is broader now. And, and they, they do need to be cognizant of, of the types of values they're imparting. Of course, no, no argument there. But he says, I don't like to preach and I don't like to be preached to. So I keep to the universal values. What's a universal value that, that everybody in general, that the idea there is you keep it a general enough value that everybody's going to agree with and they can have their own little applications of it and they can bicker and argue about that on their own. But, that, that's the key. That's that, that's the key. You keep it general enough. So he and he cites Jesus. How do you like that, SJWs? He cites a Christian Bible verse where Jesus says, "Do unto others as you would have them do unto you." That's the golden rule. Now, obviously, Stan Luke's not Christian. I'm not saying he's pushing Christian or anything like that. I'm just saying that, that's that's what he's going for here. A general idea. You shouldn't treat anybody the way you wouldn't want to be treated yourself. That's that's the message he's trying to push. Not that uh, um, gender is uh, is fluid and and we need to have more representation and and this this and that. Those are specific specific little applications. Now you can explore that kind of things in story, but when you start to to push and and, and preach them, that's a real problem. And, and that's that's what the Captain Marvel comic books have been about for so long now. Ever since the Kelly Sue DeConnick, you know, totally redid her character and, and, and they just can't, they can't get her comics to sell. They keep rebooting them as people have pointed out. And that's why, because if you pick up any one of those comics, those recent Captain Marvel comics, they're ridiculous. They're nothing but preaching, 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 preaching about the woman and, and blah, 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 and intersectional feminism. That's not what entertainment and story is for. That's what propaganda is for. And that's what Marvel Comics has decided to do for a long time now. And now that's what Kevin Feige has decided to do. He has decided to, to throw his hat in that ring and now be a, a propagandist instead of a storyteller. That is, that is what we're going for. That is all these comments that he's giving us. That's the new, that's the new approach to the MCU by Kevin Feige. So two points in closing that I'd like to make about this. We are in a, in a weird place in history right now. I think that uh, decades down the road, people are going to look back at this time period and, and laugh and just laugh at how 
self-righteous and, and blatant uh, in terms of the propaganda and the preaching that, that people tend to give you at all levels of society. Think about like when you watch a movie back in the old days in, in which a uh, a woman was not allowed to uh, to approach a gentleman at a dance or whatever because that wasn't done. Young women, you know, couldn't just approach somebody and introduce themselves, you know, uh, uh, approach a young man and introduce themselves. That'd be scandalous. Well, we look at that and laugh today. That's that's just silly. That's just, you know, that was your culture then. We understand that. But that's, there's nothing to that, right? We, we understand that. Um you know, you think about things like the Hayes Code in cinema and all this, the, 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 the moralizing and the preaching that came from, from entertainment, from story, you know, industries, uh, or from, from government or from just society in general, uh, uh, producers in terms of, of, uh, capitalism, you know, product, uh, creation, people who created products and whatnot and tried to sell them. It's, it's laughable. And, and we've gotten to that point now and it's going to be laughable to generations to come when they look back at this. I told this story the other night on Son of Comics Gate Live, but I'll retell it here because it's relevant. A after the whole Gillette nonsense and that stupid commercial about how oh, masculinity is toxic and, and men need to be better and blah, 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 you're selling frickin' razors. Shut your ass up with the moral preaching. Just sell some damn razors. That's all we want. We don't come to Gillette for a moral compass, for crying out loud. We want razors. That's it. So, uh, of course, I decided I'm never buying Gillette razors again, and I used to, to buy that product. I was really pissed off about it though at the time, so I actually went one step further that most people, you know, wouldn't do. But I actually, okay, Procter and Gamble makes our, our owns the, the the name brand there of Gillette, so I wanted to see what else does Procter Gamble make because I just didn't want to, not like me, my my purchasing power is going to affect them or anything, but I just didn't want to, to to support them. So I looked up the brands that they they uh, produce, and, and the only other brand that I was really buying was Bounty Paper Towels. So I thought, well, I'm going to I'm going to get something besides Bounty Paper Towels. I'm just so sick of it or whatever. So I went into the store. And I see, hey, you know what? Here we go. Brawny. There you go. Strong, strong men. You know, that, that's the paper towel I'm going to buy now. So I bought this huge pack and, and that was great. You know, they're good paper towels, whatever. So I, I eventually, you know, got through the pack and then I go back to the store oh, weeks later or whatever and, uh, decided, you know, let me go buy the brawny paper towels again. And this bullshit staring at me from the counter. I just want to buy some damn paper towels. I don't need, I don't need your bullshit propaganda. And I, I don't need, I don't have to go to, to, to razors or to paper towels for, for clarification on gender. It, it, it's completely ridiculous. And, and if you see how ridiculous that is, it's just as ridiculous going to, going to story and, and trying to, to push all of those, those little sermons and whatnot into story. Now there's a, uh, I understand why the storytellers do it. They think, well, you know, mythology, of course, they have some sort of innate understanding that, that mythology does give us values and it does, uh, you know, help us to, to hand them down perpetuity. But th that's, that's not, that, that self destructs the mythology when you purposefully push the values in it because then it's no longer story. It's propaganda. It does not resonate with people in any way. People turn back from it. So, so that's, that's, it's just self-defeating. It's self-defeating. So that's the one point. And the other point related to that is that Kevin Feige, by, by misreading Stan Lee's comments, by misreading the spirit of Stan Lee and what he did with these characters, Kevin Feige thinks, and this is something that Brie Larson and all these other SJW celebrities think, they think that the creators, they tell the audience what they should want, how they should act. It's a one-way communication. The creators tell the audience. That's what they think. That's really their complete and total misunderstanding. That's not how mythology works. I've said a number of times in this channel, mythology is a communication back and forth. The creators will tell a story, and based on the audience's reaction to it, they will tailor that story to meet the audience's reaction, the people's reaction, to, to give them what they want, what they need. And that's how stories stick around in the public consciousness. That's how they resonate. All of this new crap, which is being given in a one-way communication, shut up and take this, shut up and, and do what we say, want what we tell you to want, think what we tell you to think, uh, have the values we tell you to have, that doesn't last. That's not going to resonate. That's the beginning of the crumbling of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, Marvel Cinematic Universe is a behemoth, okay? It's a, it's a huge, it's, it's built up this grand, huge beast, and it's been wonderful. So it's not just going to snap and, and crumble like that. I mean, you know, you can't look for one movie or two movies just to, to make it all fall down. But rest assured that if this is the direction he decides to, to go in with, with every, the future, the next phase or whatever, then the, the second half of the MCU or however long he gets, 
will be nothing, nothing, nothing like the success of the first. That the cinematic universe is doomed if this is the direction he truly is going to take it. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, all of that's, you know, well past Endgame. I'm still hoping for a good, at least closing chapter to the universe we've known and loved in Endgame. We've got to deal with, uh, Captain Feminist Pants there, you know, uh, in it to some, to some degree, whatever degree she's in it, we're going to have to deal with her smug ass face. So, uh, you know, that's going to be a real thorn in the side of it, but, you know, well. So that's, uh, yeah, the fall of Kevin Feige. It's a sad, it's a mind blowing thing, but it's really, it's really sad. And, uh, you know, hope against hope that, that, uh, you know, he wakes up and comes around to this nonsense, but he's, he's been, he's just going full, full flame into it. So I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, rather than place the ad at the end of this video, I will just go ahead and remind you tales from the stacks, my campaign for the graphic novel with Dave T is uh, doing very, very well. We've passed our $10,000 stretch goal and uh, lots of things for you to choose from. The stretch goal means that you are going to receive, if you buy a physical copy of the book, you're going to receive one of these beautiful Pablo Romero bookmarks automatically with every physical copy purchased. Now, if you want all three, if you want all three of those lovely ladies in bookmarks, then you will need to purchase the $5 bookmark add-on. And there's no extra shipping with that. It's just uh, ensuring that you get all three bookmarks with your physical copy that you've already purchased. So that's there. Uh, that's something to draw your attention to. Of course, we do have the three wonderful covers. Dave T's Indiegogo exclusive cover right there. Beautiful. We have uh, some samples of the interior art and the stories. It's going to be a great, great, gorgeous book. We have the John Malin cover uh, colored by Kyle Ritter. And then, of course, the great Kyung Lee cover as well. So some great variants there. But the one I want to draw your attention to before I leave is this Dave T cover. So we had uh, offered this Lady Anana print for a, a promotion for backers who backed on the first two days of the campaign. But it was so popular and people just kept wanting more and more and more of it. So we decided to offer a limited tier of this as a cover. So this is a cover. We're limiting it to 50, and I think we've got 16 or 17 or so uh, already spoken for. So that's one of the perks, one of the tiers on the page here. So if you want to go and, and uh, procure that before they're all gone, if, if that looks, if that cover looks of interest to you, then you'll want to do that soon. I have the links in the description for the campaign and for Dave T's Twitter and everything as well is my own. So uh, do, do check that out. Jump on it soon because it will not be lasting forever. This campaign is a is a finite thing. So thanks for all the ones who backed already and, and shared it around. I do appreciate that. And that's all for now. Stay tuned for more reviews, live streams, and more. And until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love. Thanks for watching.